This is the city, Los Angeles, California. I work here. I carry a badge. The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. Sixth. It was hot in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of Bunko Forgery Division. The boss is Captain Ron Frankel. My partner's Bill Gannon. My name's Friday. Departmental Special Order Number 51 had just been published. Bill found it on the bulletin board. Did you see this? That depends on what it is. Special Order Number 51, maybe? That's it. The whole ball of wax. Well? Well, what? Well, Joe, surely you must have something to say. No, I can't think of anything. Well, why don't you read it? I have. Well, read it again. What for? Joe, you just don't realize the impact of this order. Everything in this whole department has changed. Well, that's funny. The way I read it, the detective bureau's changed around a little, but not the whole department. A little? I'd say it was more than a little. Look at this. No more homicide division, no more robbery division. They've just been wiped out, that's all. Yeah, now it's robbery homicide division, both combined under one command. Yeah, now, doesn't that take the cake? I don't know. It sounds like a pretty good idea to me. Their functions overlap. They need to be coordinated. The purpose of the change is to gain greater efficiency, you know. Well, maybe. But look what they did to us. Fraud's division is renamed Bunko Forgery Division. The functions and duties won't change. Now, just what did they do to us? Joe, you just don't see the big picture. People are used to asking for Fraud's division. I'm used to it. Besides, who ever heard of a division being called Bunko Forgery? I have. Who says? The chief of police. He says. I'll get it. Fraud, uh, Bunko Forgery Division, Officer Gannon. Yes, ma'am. Uh, no, ma'am, you'd want missing persons. I'll transfer you. Operator, would you transfer this call to Detective Headquarters Division? Thank you. The lady wanted missing persons. Right. Why'd you transfer to DHQ? It's right there, Joe, paragraph four. I thought you said you read this. Missing persons has been transferred from Homicide Division to Detective Headquarters. You're correct. Of course I'm correct, Joe. I read the order. Besides, it makes sense. Should have been there all along. I'm surprised at you, Joe. Change is progress. Don't you knock it. Joe? Bill? Oh, and I see you got special order number 51 there. You both read it? Yes, sir. You bet we have, Skipper. You understand it? Oh, I do. I was just explaining to Joe here the reason for some of the changes. Good. It's an important order. If we give these changes a chance and work with them, we'll have a better operation throughout the Bureau. I got something for you. This letter was routed from the Bureau office this morning with a directive to investigate and reply to correspondent. It's kind of unusual. How's that? It's from the warden of the state penitentiary in Canyon City, Colorado. Seems he has an inmate by the name of Lyle Thompson. He's eligible for parole. Problem is, the parole board won't consider action in his case until they're notified of a disposition on an LAPD hold. Is there a warrant on our hold? Yes, there is. I just checked. It's still filed in R&I. I don't understand what the problem is. Simple matter of procedure. The warrant goes to the DA, we get extradition proceedings going and pick him up. It's not that simple, Bill. The man's been in prison 14 years. Our hold is just a few months older. So we don't know if we have a prosecutable case in terms of real evidence, testimony of witnesses and victims. The statute of limitations is the only part of this case that stopped running when the original arrest warrant was issued and information filed. Time has moved on. So we start over to see if there's a case. If there is, we pick him up and prosecute. If not, he gets his parole. Any idea who the original investigators were? Yeah, Sergeant Stephen Packard, a top-notch investigator. Worked in this case about 15 years ago. Yeah, I remember Steve. Well, I guess that's the place to start then, Sergeant Stephen Packard. Afraid not, Bill. Steve retired in 58 and died five years later. The only way you can help you now is by going through his notes in the warrant package. Fifteen years. That's a lot of ground to cover. Yeah, question is, where do we start? Like Joe said, it's 15 years old, but you start where everything else begins. Where's that? At the beginning. 8.40 a.m. Bill and I began our investigation in the department archives located on the mezzanine of Parker Center. Lyle Thompson's criminal package had been placed on microfilm. Bertha Johnson, the clerk on duty, said she would try to locate the original case package. Bert, would you mind hitting the lights for us? Surely. 
February 1956, arrested in Fremont County, Colorado, charged with one count grand theft auto and forgery five counts. Let's see if there's anything before that. Nope, not a thing. He was convicted in March of 56 and sentenced to the state penitentiary at Canyon City, Colorado. That's it. And the L.A. crimes he's wanted for were committed three months before that. I see. 65 now. That'd make him 51 when he was first arrested. He was no kid then. Doesn't make sense, does it? What's that? A guy going sour that late in life. There you are. Lyle Thompson, January 1956. Certified copy of the warrants inside. Thanks, Bert. Well, this brings back a few memories. Sergeant Stephen Packard. Oh, you knew him? I knew him. He's been gone almost eight years now. He went the way most policemen go, the coronary. Stephen Packard. Yes, sir, I knew Steve all right. First time I met him was in the old Central Detective Division over in the basement of the City Hall. How long ago was that, Bert? Mm. Well, I'm telling on myself, but it was 23 years come next month. I was the captain's secretary, and Steve was brand new in detectives, fresh out of uniform. My, what a sight he was. Tall, good-looking, wearing the finest $20 suit he could find. I knew right away he wasn't married like most of the fellas. You should have seen the atrocious colors in his outfit. I said to myself right then, Bertha, there's a man that needs taking care of. I guess it was a mistake of my life. But you know, I'm not a bit sorry. I was in love with that man for 15 years. He finally asked me to marry him six months before he died. He was a dedicated policeman, a great investigator. I guess things were such that he felt he had time for a wife then. But it was too late, just too late. I've heard he was a first-rate detective. That he was. His whole life was wrapped up in his work. No detail left uncovered. I've never seen a more serious, conscientious person in my life. He lived and breathed this police department. I guess it's really why he didn't have time for a wife and family. Everything he did was thorough, exact, and on his mind every minute of the day. Chief Parker used to say that a man must have something within himself that will cause him to strive hard to perform his work well. Steve had that something. He sounds like a straight-laced, hard-working bachelor I know. Nine oh five a.m. We return to the office to study the contents of the fourteen-year-old felony warrant package compiled by the deceased Sergeant Stephen Packard. It looks like our 65-year-old inmate is riding three felonies, embezzlement of a brand-new 1956 model convertible, one NSF check for $300, and theft of a commemorative coin valued at $400. Take a look at the date of occurrence. Huh. All on the same day, January 3rd, 1956. Right, the coin at 9 a.m., card 11, check at 320. All with positive identification by the victims. Guy went on a real spree, didn't he? Yeah, he didn't seem to care too much about who knew him, did he? He sure didn't have the earmarks of a career hoodlum. Take a look at the M.O. on this vehicle report. Yeah, he was some kind of pro, wasn't he? He took the car for a test drive, and he just didn't bother to return it. Yeah, after showing the salesman his driver's license, his identification. Was the car recovered? Yeah, right here. Radio car picked it up in a parking lot at the airport three days later. But the parking stub found on the window indicates it was dumped about five hours after it was taken from the car agency. Packard have any notes there on a follow-up at the airport? I'll take a look. Well, I'll be. What do you got? Packard's personal notes. The techniques he used, little memory gimmicks by each name, and a word or two about the person he interviewed. What about him? Well, they're so detailed, almost like a code. Only one man I know keeps notes like this, a straight-laced, hard-working bachelor I know. All right, coincidence, that's all. Techniques like this are traditional, you know that. I'm sure I picked it up somewhere along the line, just as he did. You can call it what you like, Joe, but there are an awful lot of these coincidences building up. Yeah, what about that airport follow-up? See what I mean? Like the lady said, his mind was always on work, work, work. All right, what about the follow-up? At the airport, January 6th, Packard talked with a ticket agent. And? Positive ID, Lyle Thompson bought a plane ticket on January 3rd. To some place in Colorado. Right, Colorado Springs. <laughs> At 9.20 a.m., the necessary preliminary record search was completed. There were three separate crimes to be reinvestigated. 
we decided to start with a car agency. The original crime report indicated it was located at 137 Gower Street in Hollywood. 9.45 a.m., the car agency that was there 14 years ago no longer existed. The address was now a place called Tony's Gym. We went in to talk to the present occupant to determine the whereabouts of the car agency owner. Gentlemen, gentlemen, come in, come in. You're just in time. Yes, sir. Don't say it, I know. You'd like to have a fantastic physique just like mine. Isn't it great? And it all comes from hard work and discipline, gentlemen. Yes, sir, but we're here on another matter. We're police officers. Police officers? All the more reason you boys should be in better shape. And I can tell just by looking at you that your triceps bronchi are in terrible condition. I'll bet you feel kind of weak and listless at times, don't you? Well, sometimes when I get up in the morning. Aha, uh -huh, just as I thought. 20 minutes a day is all it takes, and you can have a body like mine. Isn't it beautiful? Yes, but we're trying to locate the owner of the car agency that occupied this building. Oh, they've been out of business for five years. I took the building over after they left. Now watch this. This is a lot of weight, gentlemen. I bet neither one of you could match this. Yes, sir. A man by the name of Alan Randall, the owner of the car agency. Do you have any idea where we might locate him? He's dead. Died about three years ago. I knew it was coming. The man let himself go, didn't watch his weight, let his muscles get flabby. It's just not healthy to let yourself go like that. Now observe. 400 pounds, gentlemen. That's the sign of a healthy man. This exercise provides tremendous development for your biceps femus, vastus lateralis, and satoris. Do you know of anyone else that was a principal associated with the car agency? No, nope. old Alan was the only one, lord and master, over the whole outfit. All right, sir, thank you very much. Well, I guess that's it. No victim, no case. Let's move on, then, before he makes me feel like the beach weakling. I heard that, sir. Now, for a sparse $25 a week, I can build you into a he-man like myself. $25 a week. Interested? Thanks, anyway, but I don't think my body could do without the nutrition. Sir? 25 a week, I'd have to stop eating. Without the complaining witness or the victim in an embezzled vehicle case, there can be no prosecution. One of Lyle Thompson's three Los Angeles felony charges would be dropped. We had two left to investigate. On January 3rd, 1956, one of the three crimes committed by Lyle Thompson was the passing of a $300 check at the Londoner Jewelry Store in the Wilshire District. There were no funds to cover the check. The Londoner was still in business. 10.50 a.m., we followed up. Yes, sir, we've been in business since 1930. What's this all about? We're looking for a Mr. Richard Burns. Does he still work here? He sure does. I'm Richard Burns. No, sir, the man we're looking for would be quite a bit older, say around 65. Oh, that would be my father. He's the senior Burns of the family. Is he around? No, sir. Dad retired five years ago, turned the whole place over to me. He hasn't anything wrong, has he? No, sir. We're just following up on a bad check case he had some years ago. Well, I have all the files here. Maybe that'll be of some help. No, we have the information ourselves. We need to contact your father to see if he still remembers the case, and if so, if he still wants to see the man prosecuted. Well, if you can catch him at home, his address is 426 Winston Lane. But with golf, bowling, hiking, and pinochle games, he's gone most of the time. Busy retirement, huh? You can say that again. I've never seen a man of his age with so much energy. Would you have any idea what his schedule is today? Well, let's see. Today's Wednesday. Should be coming up on the 15th hole just about now. That's the Wilshire Country Club out on Pico. If you leave now, you can probably catch him in the locker room. Worth a try. Let me give you Dad's file to take along with you. It'll help him remember the case. All right, so that'll be fine. What was the name? Thompson. Lyle Thompson. 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 Yes, here it is. This was 14 years ago. Yes, sir. You're just now catching up with him? No, sir, I'd put it another way. How's that? Well, a man's been in prison. He's just about ready to get out. Oh. I'd say he was catching up with himself. Eleven twenty a.m., we arrived at the Wilshire Country Club. Richard Burns, Sr. had just finished 18 holes of golf. Sure, I remember the case very well. What was the investigator's name, Sergeant? Sergeant Packard. Uh, Packard, that's right. Stephen Packard, a heck of a nice fellow. What's he doing these days? He passed away about five years ago. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Seems like everyone I know is passing on. I guess it's that time of life, huh? Oh, I don't know. Looking at you, I wouldn't say so. Yeah, the old man upstairs has treated me all right. I've had a good life. Top-notch business, fine family, the greatest grandkids you've ever seen. And I still swing a pretty mean golf club. That's enough about me. 
What do you want to know about this check matter? Well, sir, we're making another investigation to see if there's still a prosecutable case, and you're the only witness listed on the NSF check he passed. Well, that's right, but the last I heard, the man was already in prison. Yes, sir, he's done 14 years. He's eligible for parole now. And you want to take him up on this check? Well, our job is to reinvestigate the case, sir. The rest of it's not up to us. Who's it up to? We present the particulars of the case to the district attorney. Then a decision will be made to prosecute or recall the warrant. What about the statute of limitations? You don't mean to tell me that after 14 years, the man can still be prosecuted for a $300 check? Yes, sir, the statute of limitations stopped running when he left the state. But 14 years in prison? Sergeant, that's a long time. Think about it. I'm sure this Thompson fellow has. Yes, sir, it is a long time. 14 years. That's 168 months. Or 728 weeks, or 5,096 days. 122,304 hours, or 7,338,240 minutes. And that man's probably counted every one of the 440,294,400 seconds. Any way you look at it, Sergeant, it's a long time. Don't you think he's learned his lesson? Well, there's no guarantee, Mr. Burns. It just seems to me when a man spends that many years in prison, he's not going to put himself in jeopardy of going back. I remember the man, Sergeant. He was a nice sort of fellow. I'm sure he wouldn't harm anyone. Like I said, Mr. Burns, we're only investigating the case. Tell me something. How often do prisoners violate their parole? Well, nationally, 63% of those released are rearrested within five years of that release with 43% of those rearrested within one year following release. Maybe he's one of that 37% that doesn't go back. Maybe. Do me a favor, Sergeant. What's that, sir? When you take the case to the district attorney, tell him I won't testify against that man. Yes, sir. I think his debt to society has been paid with interest. <laughs> A reluctance to testify by the victim would carry great weight in the district attorney's decision to extradite and prosecute. The results of our investigation into the third crime committed by Lyle Thompson would, in all probability, be the deciding factor between further legal action or freedom for the inmate. The third crime committed by Lyle Thompson was the theft of a commemorative coin valued at $400. The victim was George Wentworth, Thompson's former employer. During the past 14 years, Wentworth Industries had moved and expanded into eight separate facilities. 2.20 p.m., we located the general offices. And you tell Saunders I want those reports on my desk by 5 o'clock, or I want another reason why. And one more thing, send a memo to Blanchard at the Chicago branch. Tell him if he can't get the job done without a production control man, I'll get somebody who can. Yes, Mr. Wentworth, is there anything else? No, that ought to keep you busy for two days. Can I help you, gentlemen? Yes, ma'am. We're police officers. We'd like to see Mr. Wentworth. Your names, please. Officer Gannon, Sergeant Friday. Mr. Wentworth, Sergeant Friday and Officer Gannon from the police department to see you. What do they want? We're here to see him about a former employee by the name of Thompson. Lyle Thompson? Yes, ma'am. They're here to see you about Lyle Thompson, Mr. Wentworth. Thompson. Send him right in. Go right in, please. Thank you. How is he? Ma'am. Lyle. He's an old friend. How is he? I mean, are they treating him all right? Well, he's in Colorado. We don't really know him, ma'am. We're just here checking on a matter that occurred some years ago. I see. Thank you just the same. Go right in. Thank you. Come in. Come in. Come on in. I'm not going to ask you people to sit down. You won't be here that long. What's this about Thompson? He's still in the state pen at Colorado where he belongs, isn't he? He's in prison. Well, then what do you want with me? We're here about a theft report you made back in 56. A theft report? What about the theft report? You said Thompson stole a commemorative coin from you. Do you recall the incident, sir? Yes, of course I remember. What about it? We're making a supplemental investigation on the matter. Why? For what reason? Lyle Thompson has served 14 years in prison, and now he's eligible for parole. The parole board won't consider action until we inform them of a disposition on this charge. I don't understand. What do you mean, a disposition? Well, sir, there's an outstanding felony warrant against Thompson for stealing your coin. Now, if it's determined a prosecution for this crime is in order, he'll be brought here for trial. And if it's not? He'll most likely get his parole. Well, what do I have to do with all this? Well, it depends on the evidence available. Now, if you still wish to testify against the man, there's a good possibility he'll be extradited. Well, I say he should get the full measure of the law. Besides, he was a rotten employee. He always tried to run things his way. Well, Mr. Wentworth, his attributes as an employee have no bearing on the case. It's a matter of your desire to testify and sufficient evidence. Well, I want to testify, all right. My father gave me that coin, a 1915 $50 gold piece from the Pan Pacific Exposition in San Francisco. They only made 483 of them. Do you know what they're worth? Yes, sir. The report listed its market value at $400.
That was back in 56. Today, the 1915 S Series round Pan Pacific gold piece is worth over $6,000. Now, don't you think he should be prosecuted? Well, sir, today's value has little significance, but either way, it's a felony. And like I said, it's up to you. We did want you to be aware that the man has already served 14 years in prison. Yes, and he worked for this company 18 years before that. My father thought Lyle Thompson was the world's gift to engineering. He had him snowed real good, but I saw through him. He was always trying to show me up in the old man's eyes. I showed him who was boss after the old man died. How's that, sir? I fired him, that's what. Is that when he took your coin? Yes, that's when he took it. You've got the report, man. Read it. Then it's your position that you still want to see him prosecuted. He's in jail now. He belongs in jail, and that's where I'm going to see him stay. All right, sir. I guess our business is finished for now. Yes, I guess it is at that. By the way, Mr. Wentworth, how many of those coins did you have? Just the one. Why? No reason, sir. I just find it interesting that you've kept track of its value all these years. Sergeant, I want you to see this. I heard everything that went on in there. And I want you to know I don't make a habit of this sort of thing. But he's a cruel, vicious man. Lyle's been in prison for 14 years, and it's all George Wentworth's fault. How's that, ma'am? That's what I said. He always hated Lyle, and he has good reason for wanting him to stay in prison. Why do you say Wentworth has good reason for seeing him stay in prison? Lyle invented a high-pressure valve that this company manufactures. 90% of the company's business is from that valve. Lyle could sue him for everything he has, but knowing Lyle, he wouldn't. He's a good man. George Wentworth drove him away at a time when Lyle needed his job and his friends. Lyle's wife and son were killed in an automobile accident. Two days later, he fired him. He drove him to it, Sergeant. Please, help him. 4.10 p.m., we returned to the office and briefed the captain on our findings. You know what I'd like to do? Yeah, I know. Well, it's legal, Skipper. It's not up to us, Gannon. I'm sorry, but you know that. The circumstances of his employment have nothing to do with the charges. It's too bad a hunch isn't admissible. Why, you got one? That coin. I know the original investigation makes a real good circumstantial case, but I just can't get over Wentworth following the value of it all these years. Oh, that's a pretty weak one, Joe. Could be the man's hobby. Some people read the stock market reports every day, but they don't own any stock. Everybody has a hang-up. Yeah, well, this guy's hang-up isn't coins. It's Lyle Thompson's freedom. Nothing we can do. Wrap up your reports and get them to the DA in the morning. Righty, Gannon, the gentleman here wants to see you. There it is. A 1915 S-Series $50 gold piece from the Pan Pacific Exposition at San Francisco. Worth over $6,000 today. Thompson never took it. I thought he did. All the circumstances indicated he did. It was simply lost the whole time. I found it about five years ago when we moved to our new building. Why didn't you report finding it? I didn't think it mattered. He was in prison in another state for committing crimes there. That doesn't explain this afternoon, does it? I've done a lot of soul searching since this afternoon, Sergeant. On top of losing his secretary and getting the lecture of my life. I don't know why I said he took the coin. I guess it was old resentments coming through. I got frightened for not reporting that I found the coin five years ago. I want to live with a clear conscience. So here I am. I guess you've got a few questions. Yes, sir, a few. Ask the big one first, will you? Sir. How's my conscience been the last 14 years? The story you have just seen is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On August 7th, a report was submitted to the office of the district attorney. In a moment, that decision. The outstanding felony warrant for the arrest of Lyle Thompson was recalled at the recommendation of the office of the district attorney.